welcome to my contemporary a thon vlog. So it is midnight now and I'm going to read a couple things because I've decided that I'm going to skip class tomorrow. The things I do for you guys. So the first thing I'm going to read is one thing that I didn't have on my TBR. Are we surprised? No. Why do I even make TBRs? For content, that's that's why. I'm going to read Sokotu and Nada, and this is a manga, a really short manga. This fits for a lot of challenges. Uh, the plants on the cover, there's yellow on the cover. It's beloved by the community, I'm sure. Uh, I'm gonna read this, and it's really short, so I should get through that really quickly. And then I have I Wanna Be Where You Are and Birthday that I have, as well as The Grace Year. I don't know which one I will read after this, but I will update you guys when I finished it and we're gonna play it by year because when am I ever prepared for anything that I do? I just finished Sokotu and Nada and I think I'm gonna give it three out of five stars. It was really cute. It follows this Japanese girl and this Muslim girl as their roommates and it's just talking about the different cultures specifically like muslim culture and common misconceptions and all that jazz it was really cute really fun but there wasn't really like a plot to it it was all just each page was kind of a different like a different time a different scenario it didn't really have a lot of substance so it's pretty average for me but it was cute and I said that like a billion times, but yeah, my first read for Contemporary-a-thon completed. Alright, so not gonna lie to you guys, it is day three of Contemporary-a-thon and I just now finished a book. And it's not even strictly contemporary because what are rules? I just finished The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. If you guys don't know, I have a book club with Carly from Carly's Books and this is our September pick. The live show for the book will be going up the day this vlog goes up, so check out the live show. I don't know how to feel about it. I really liked the first half and the second half just went off the rails which who knew booktubers were right and knew what they were talking about I didn't I don't know I think the live shows gonna be interesting because I don't exactly know what I just read I'm going to the library to pick up permanent record which honestly is the book that I've just dedicated contemporary -thon to it's the one I'm most excited about, so hopefully once I start reading that, it gets me invested, it gets me productive, because right now, it, I have no desire to be vlogging, I have no desire to be reading, and that doesn't exactly work with a readathon now, does it? No. So, we're going to do that, and see what happens. <laughs> back home and I got permanent record and I'm so fucking hyped guys. I loved emergency contact so much and I have heard nothing but amazing things from every single person who has read this so I'm so ready. Also the biggest crime the library has ever committed was binding up this beautiful book because if you guys haven't seen how the book is like the dust jacket is Pablo the main character and then the girl who I don't know her name is it is on the actual hardcover and it's like an illusion or whatever it's so pretty I hope I love this I know I'm going to but like I really hope I love this so I can buy myself my own copy because this is one of the most beautiful books I have ever witnessed in my life Mary H.K. Choi's cover person is an artist that's all I have to say hi so I'm reading permanent record I'm only on page four but I already have things to say first of all 
I love Pablo's dad. I don't know how, I don't know if he's even going to be in the story, but just the, de- like, just the descriptions of him. I already love him, and I want him to be my dad. Secondly, Pablo is talking about how he would, because he works at a, like, fancy health food store, like a Whole Foods, and he's talking about how it doesn't matter what store he goes to, he's always going to, like, be assumed that he works there. And, but he also talks about how he's also followed around in stores because people think that he's gonna steal something and this just one line I just I have to read it because it sent shivers down my body it's amazing when you think about it how racism is a wave and a particle since we also get followed around in stores as if we are going to steal something I guess shoplifting is an inside job I love Mary H. Kid Choi's writing so much. And um, anyways, I'm going to keep going because, wow. I already ship Pablo and Leanna. Oh my god, they're so cute. I'm going to scream. All right, so it is almost 1 a.m. I have a 9 a.m. class tomorrow. But I'm reading Permanent Record, and I'm 90 pages in, and I'm really, really loving it. Uh, Nothing too crazy has happened yet. We have had the little meet-cute between Leanna and Pablo. I am just loving Pablo's life, and just his narrating, his journey through the craziness of life we've talked about like cultural appropriation and how being a mixed kid kind of you have trouble navigating that through like are you good enough like which side are you valid in making discussions or commenting on like cultural appropriation and just like racism and like things that aren't necessarily like white kid saying the n-word but like more subtle things I guess and it's just I don't know it's really hard to explain but I'm really really liking the discussions that are being made in here we are getting a lot about his family life because he has uh his mother is a doctor and his father is kind of like this freelance guy and he has a younger brother in like high school or middle school and we're kind of seeing those relationships we're seeing the relationship with his friends and his roommates and it's just it's been a really good time this is definitely exactly like exactly like emergency contact where it's very slice of life but not boring because I don't think I'm a huge slice of life person but because Mary H.K. Choi is so amazing in her writing and how she just tells a story like someone is talking to you and telling it to you with like normal conversation speak uh it's it's just really good she's just I love her so much Hey guys, I'm back home from school and I've been reading Permanent Record. I am halfway, yes, I'm a little over halfway done with this. Oh my god, it's so fucking cute. The first kiss scene in this is literally the cutest fucking thing in the entire world like there is not a more wholesome or cute kiss first kiss scene like it's it's in here like the number one like it was so fucking cute i love how realistic 
Mary H. K. Choi's relationships are. And this is the same reason why I love uh, Katie Henry so much, because she's able to depict teenagers in such a realistic way, and Mary H. K. Choi is able to depict uh, relationships in such a realistic way that isn't, like, boring. They're, like, funny, and they actually have chemistry, and they're just so... It's just so perfect. It's so perfect. If you, uh, I know I haven't really given much, like, on-the-spot reactions to this book just because most of the time I've been reading it, I'm either not in the mood to really vlog or, like, I'm at school or something. So if you want to see, like, all of my little updates, I've been, like, updating my Goodreads, like, like three times on one page basically so um my goodreads is always linked in the description so go check that out uh if you are curious because there are just so many things like she referenced the uh this is fine dog in the burning house meme like i it, it's just it's so realistic and she captures millennial humor without being cheesy and that's so hard to do but she does it so effortlessly my only real critique about this book is just how irresponsible pablo is because a big part of this book i don't even remember if i've given a synopsis of this book hopefully i have pablo is going through like a lot of debt right now he has like student debt and like student loan debt and like credit card debt and he fucking bought turntables from guitar center i guess and never paid the bills for that and it's just like i understand the discussions about how you know society throws teenagers into like this financial crisis basically where they have to take loans and do all these things just to get an education I totally understand where that narrative is coming from like that's totally valid but Pablo is so irresponsible in this and it's really frustrating. I'm just like rolling my eyes a lot from it because every single time Pablo gets like he's forced to confront his financial crisis and his financial situation by legal people who like are collectors like trying to get him to pay the money or you know at least answer his damn phone he just ignores it and he just it off like and I understand that that is again realistic that is something people do but it's just so frustrating like boy just you gotta you can't like you can't do that like that's not how life works you can't just ignore your problems and think they're gonna go away so it's just that's just oh, it's so freaking frustrating and i'm also a little confused because based on what i know about his family situation he seems to come from a very well-off family his mom is an anesthesiologist so I know she makes bank. And then his dad, I can't exactly remember, but he's like a playwright. And he seems to be like one of those people who can just like freelance. And so it doesn't seem, it seems like he's okay. Maybe not okay enough to pay for college education. But certainly his mom can or at least help out and that hasn't really been addressed like it hasn't really been talked about like if his parents just don't want to support him whatsoever but it but they also well at least his mom doesn't want him working at like a whole foods she wants him to be in school but like ooh, then why doesn't she like help him out i don't I don't exactly know. I I know that's just like tech technical, like me kind of nitpicking. It's just seems like a plot hole that I don't know if it's gonna be addressed. But because it's such a big part of like the conflict with Pablo, it seems a little weird. But yeah, they have so much chemistry. They are the 
fucking cutest couple. They are so soft and I love them so much and I am flying through this too. It's so many good things, so many good discussions in here, and just with a really cute romance, it's like, what more could you ask for, truly? But I am going to read more of this and check in with you when I have more to say. This man, who is clearly in so much debt, went to the doctors and paid over $600 for a doctor's appointment. And his fucking mother is a doctor. But he didn't want to go to her because he's avoiding her like a little bitch. Make it make sense. Hello, my name is Heather and I can't stop reading fantasy novels. Let's just acknowledge the elephant in the room here. This vlog was a failure. It was an absolute mess. Editing it right now, it took me like five minutes to edit because I have pretty much no footage. I mean, I have like 20 minutes, so that's not to say I don't have footage. I do. But I really don't. Like, you know. You're watching this right now. You're watching me talk right now. You know that this has been a shitty vlog. I never wanted to read. I never wanted to f vlog. And so I didn't. But you know what? I still managed to actually read stuff. And I did read two things on my TBR. So as much as I say this was a failure, it wasn't too bad of a failure. From the last time we were spoke spoking, from the last time we were speaking, I was reading Permanent Record and I finished this a couple days ago and I also want to say that my friend Monty from It's Monty Price, you guys know I mentioned him all the time on my channel, he actually sent me his extra copy of Permanent Record and literally like 10 minutes before filming this clip I realized it's signed. Oh my gosh, the goddess. Mary HK Choi actually signed this. I am so blessed and now I can actually show you guys the masterpiece of this book. You ready? You ready? You ready? <gasps> oh, look at her! This really is one of the most beautiful books I have ever witnessed and here, here's a little face and then it goes in the Oh, I love it so much. He did not have to send me this extra copy. He did not have to do that, but he did. And I'm so thankful for it because I absolutely adored this book. I, the ending wrecked me so badly. I honestly was on the verge of tears for at least like 30 minutes after reading this. I was so raw. I DM'd Monty immediately and I was like, if I had even a sliver of emotional vulnerability, I would be bawling my eyes out right now because the ending to this, I will never be the same. Like it was, it was so good. But I'm also like, why? Why, Mary? Why did you do that to me? I would like to be compensated from that torture that you inflicted on me. I feel like that's valid. I feel like I'm due to have compensation. But she doesn't know I exist, so don't think I'm going to be getting that anytime soon. But a girl can dream. And this just, this was so good. I do love uh, Emergency Contact a little more. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars, mainly just because of the problems I, I, you guys already know. I was just irritated at Pablo the whole time. But he definitely grows. He has beautiful character development towards the end of this. It's just 
This book is so raw and realistic and I just love it so much. I really am not equipped enough to really say my thoughts about this. So not only am I going to link Monty down in the description, but I'm also going to link his review of this book because he is way more eloquent than I could ever dream of. It was so good. And I have my own copy and it's from Monty himself, which makes it even more special because he loves this book so much. And he literally introduced me to Mary H.K. Choi. I probably would have never read any of her books without his pressuring to do so. And I am so grateful for it. So I read that. And then I finished The Gray Tear by Kim Lidget. Uh, if it looks like I have pink eye right now, that's just because I used hot pink eyeshadow today and I'm pasty enough where eyeshadow literally stains my eyelids. Yeah, I'm that kind of white. Let's not talk about it. The Gray Tear. This was a wild ride. Let me just tell you. A lot of people are tagging it as Handmaid's Tale meets Hunger Games meets Lord of the Flies. And that's pretty much like really encompasses what this book is. I know a lot of people don't really like book comparisons, but I feel like it's just the best way to really describe the tone of this book and without giving you too much away because I firmly believe that you should go into this pretty pretty blind, but I'm not going to not talk about it because that's kind of, you know, my job even though I don't get paid for it yet. Keep watching my videos so I can get monetized, okay? It, the story takes place in this village town and it is a very very heavily gendered society. The men have all the power. The women really don't have any rights. They can't do anything. They can't speak. They can't, you know, that bullshit. And when these girls come to age, so when they turn 16, they have what they call a grace year, which is where all of the girls who have turned 16 they all are sent off to this encampment I think that's what they call it so this is where the Lord of the Flies comes in and they're all sent to their encampment because the theory is that when these girls come of age they have this magic inside of them and they need to go to this encampment spend the year to build up like accept their magic and then like get rid of it that's the theory, at least. And when our main character goes it goes to this encampment, obviously things go awry, things aren't as they seem, discoveries are made, things happen, and it's crazy. It, this book is super, it's really eerie, it's really chilling. I would consider it horror. I always preface saying horror because I've never really read it before, but it certainly like was really chilling. Like I said, it sent shivers, gave me goosebumps. It was, it's really weird and it's, it's like, I've never seen Midsummer, but from the descriptions that people have told me it kind of gives that vibe. Like it's very culty, uh, kind of like Strange Grace, like I mentioned in my TBR. It's just, it's eerie, it's uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. Like I was super uncomfortable reading this. Nothing is like explicit, it's just those weird feelings and those weird atmosphere, it just, ugh, ugh. I could not stop reading. Like I could not put this down. As soon as I got into it, I just kept turning the page. The pacing is a little, like the narrative gets a little clunky near the end, but the ending was so good. And I just, if you are looking for like a dark feminist kind of Hunger Games dystopian-esque book, I think this is a really good one. I only gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars, but that's mainly just because it's not really the genre that I prefer. I'm a fantasy gal through and through, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this. It's a pretty fun read. If you're looking for some spooky feels and some misogyny that you don't get enough of in your daily life, on a silver platter, you're welcome. Ooh, did you hear that? 
the yeehaw kind of popped out a little bit right there. So another thing that I haven't been talking about that I have started to read during this week, but I haven't talked to you guys about it because it's not even close to being contemporary. It is fantasy. That is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marin. I want to love this book so bad. Like, you don't understand. I love aesthetics. Possibly more than reality itself. I don't know. Maybe. This cover is everything I could ever want a cover to be. Like, I love this. It gives me Slytherin energy. It gives me gold. It gives me dark florals. It gives me Baroque. It gives me glitter. Like, it gives me life itself. And the author, if you've seen her Instagram, like, aesthetic queen. We love a dark queen fairy aesthetic. Yes, we do. This also has to do with witches, which I love. Give it to me. I am... 60 pages into this. Obviously that's not a lot because this is, I think it's a 560 page book, but oh my god it is so hard to get into. The writing in this is so all over the place. You're just like thrown into this world and I read predominantly fantasy so I can catch on to things fairly quickly. I can you know follow a world even if I don't know anything about it I can kind of just like bullshit my way through it you know like I do with regular life but this is so hard to get into just reading the first chapter of this I was like this first chapter just put me in a reading slope like that's literally how I felt the author again just like throws you in and there are just people just like thrown into you and and like this plot that you're not understanding but you're just expected to care and you're expected to just turn the page but the author doesn't give you enough to like grip onto to like th like draw you in if that makes sense she's just like <sighs> word vomit like world vomit that's what it is because i don't know what the fuck's going on i don't know if i'm just stupid like am i i don't know maybe but like i I'm like literally just like skimming the pages now just trying to get to the point where everybody is loving this because everybody is giving this five stars. Everybody. Everybody's giving this five stars. And I want to love it. I want to give it five stars. I want to love it so I can buy it. Okay? So I've heard because I asked on Twitter. I was like, at what point am I supposed to fall in love with this? Someone said 100 pages. So I'm going to try that. Someone said 150 pages. We'll see about that. But then somebody else said 200 pages shit 200 200 pages for me to, what 200 pages for me to read until i care ma'am how much time do you think i have that's a whole ass book just to care i don't know about that but like i said i want to love it but this clip is already 18 minutes so I need to close this off. So I read four things this week. The first thing I read was Sokoto and Nada and I gave this three out of five stars. Then I read The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert which I gave three out of five stars. Yes. If you want to hear my concrete thoughts about this as well as Carly's the live show like I said earlier is going to be today the vlog the day this vlog goes up and then i read permanent record by mary hk Choi, 4.5 out of 5 stars then i read the greatest year by kim Blidget, which i gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars so lots of mediocre reads but still an okay week i believe i actually completed contemporary -athon. This has yellow on the cover. It is beloved by the community. It's a 2019 release. It's a diverse read. It, it had everything but plants on the cover. And then this has plants on the cover and yellow on the cover. Sakoto Unada has plants on the cover. And the Grace Year has plants on the cover. So, but even if you don't count the Grace Year, I completed all the other ones. So I actually ended up completing the Debrary Thon. So. This was a shitty vlog, but what can you say about that? I accomplished something, so cheers to that, bitches. I don't know how you would have enjoyed this vlog, but if you did, you're a real one. And if you didn't, again, you still continue to watch till the end. 
watch the live show. And that's all I have to say. Thank you.